Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Salem. <coughs> I invite you to stand as you're able and join us in singing Alle, Alleluia. Raising 
Good morning. My name is Joshua and I'm your platform assistant for today. We welcome you to Unity of Salem today in the same warm and loving spirit with which Jesus greeted his friends. We greet you knowing that no one is here by accident or coincidence. We are each an essential part of the energy that is Unity of Salem. Right where you are all right where you are along your life path or on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Reverend Patty, and I would love to welcome you by joining together in prayer. Mm, sweet spirit. We come together in spiritual community knowing that we are connected heart to heart, that with every breath we breathe, we are breathing the same air, the same energy. No matter any distance, whether we're here in the sanctuary or, or joining online, we are truly connected. And we celebrate this connection with joy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. I look around the sanctuary and I see there's no one here for the first time, but I do know that there might be someone joining us online for the first time. Um, we are honored to welcome you here, and it is truly our joy to share this, um, this morning, this day, whatever time this is for you, to share this time with you. If you would like more information about Unity of Salem, you can find that on our website or give us a call at the office during the week, and we'd be honored to connect with you. So I have a few announcements to share with you today. First, it's time to register for this Wednesday's online workshop with Reverend Paul John Roach, the author of the book Reverend Patty has been using for the, these services these past few weeks. There is information in your bulletin or on our website, www.unityofsalem.com. We've kicked off our back to school drive. The box is over near, uh, I can't talk. The box is over near the main entrance. We are once again working with a boys and girls club to provide supplies to students in Salem Kaiser. We will be collecting items throughout the month of August. I now invite Sherry up to make an announcement. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Sunday. So, uh, I want to talk about the um, what we're calling Reimagine Home campaign. We're kicking that off, we're ramping that up, and there's a whole bunch of events that are going to come up, and this is, uh, it's really twofold. One, <clears throat> it's fundraising to pay for the fabulous um revitalization that we've done with the, with the sanctuary and I, I don't know about you but I walk in here today with this beautiful color on the sanctuary and all the repairs done and it's just like ah oh, it looks so good um, but we still have to pay for it a little bit and um, and uh, we're also raising money for a micro shelter that we're going to sponsor for um, a, a safe um, rest uh, community that you know Salem the city of Salem is putting around town um, and we have funds already allocated to that so um, we're kicking this off or ramping this up like I said and there's events coming up the second part of that though is us actually visioning our our home what what and who are we going to be as we go forward as unity of Salem and so there is a workshop coming up with our wonderful Cindy Swall a consultant that we bring in from time to time and that is on September 11th from 1215 to 230 and please please I really encourage you because this is our home and we all need to participate in in visioning who and what we are going forward. So we need everybody 
Um, so because this is not the board's home, you know, uh, or the music team's home, although it is, right? But it's all our home. And so we need you for that um, visioning. And so on that day, we'll be kicking off <clears throat> an online auction as part of our fundraising. Uh, and we're looking for contributions. Um, you know, we're looking for really wonderful things that people would want to um, bid on. We have quite a few things already. We would like some more contributions. And, you know, one of the, the ideas is a basket you know, or baskets that have goodies in them. Um, so if you have something that you think would be great for the online auction, um, you can donate it and you can contact the office or we have this handy dandy um, form that we created. Um, and this is a, the online auction contribution form they're in the info center um, and so um, please use this and or contact the office um, and <clears throat> we'll be kicking that auction off uh, and at the workshop um, that will be our beginning of that online auction process we also have a couple events uh, we have a couple events in September one is that um, workshop, our visioning workshop, and the other is a concert with um, Michael Allen Harrison. And yeah, if he's a virtuoso piano player who uh, writes his own music, and I can't tell you, I've I've been to concert with him twice, and I cannot begin to tell you what kind of an um, uplifting. Um, experience it is. He is amazing. And you wouldn't want to miss that no matter what, whether it was a fundraiser or not. So that one, that's coming up as a fundraiser for us. Um, and some more stuff in the fall. So um, anyway, that's my, my spiel for today. And let me know if you have any questions or comments or whatever. Okay, moving on. Uh, if you're interested in more in information about our community activities, you can sign up on our website or in the information center to receive our weekly email. Our prayer chaplain today is Danita Wallace. She's over there. She, she will be available for one-on-one -on -one prayer on our sun porch immediately following today's service. Now let's join together and sing, My house shall be a house of prayer for all people. And this song honors and celebrates uh, prayers from six different traditions. I invite you to uh, join us in as much of the song as you'd like. The uh, different prayers are all in different languages, and uh, the words will be up on the screen, and you'll follow me. John will sometimes um, sing an uh, alternate part so we can hear various prayers going on all at once. Um, the prayers we'll be singing are from the Hindu tradition, Zoroastrians, uh, Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. So I just invite you just to open your heart to be a uh, home for all these prayers. Shall be a house of prayer for all people. My house shall be a house of prayer for all people. My house shall be a house of prayer for all people. My house shall be a house of prayer for all people. And Sri Ram J Ram J J Ram Om Sri Ram.
We now join together in affirming the Unity of Salem mission statement. Unity of Salem nurtures spiritual growth and inclusive, loving community. And our vision statement, centered in spirit, we create a world of unlimited peace, love, and joy. And our core values, inclusiveness, spirit-led, compassion, love, joy, and integrity. I now invite Jan up to share a reading for today. Good morning. The word for today is diversity. And our, our affirmation is, I honor the sacredness of all beings. I encounter a magnificent variety of people in my neighborhood, school, workplace, and community. We may be different in cultural backgrounds, gender, beliefs, appearance, or in myriad other ways, but we are all expressions of God. I celebrate the diversity of the human family, and I am grateful for my place in it. I bless our oneness as spiritual beings, but I also honor our differences. I show respect for all people and am eager to learn about cultures and customs other than my own. I open my heart to all others in the spirit of friendship and inclusion. And as I do, my world expands. I salute the light within each person and the sacredness of all beings. We are one in spirit. John 13.35 By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another.
Beautiful. We are so blessed. We're just so blessed in so many ways. Thank you, Angela, John, Dale. Oops, I'm about to about the wrong thing. So today <laughs> we complete a journey. Um, we've been on quite a journey um, over the past um, I don't remember how many weeks, walking through this book, Unity and World Religions. Um, it feels like it's been a little bit of a whirlwind. Um, and, and it's kind of surprising that it's complete because there are so many religions, but there's a lot that got left out of the conversation um, because we, I did need to choose a lens within which to look at this. And I chose the lens of, of John Paul Roach and, and, and to follow his journey through the world religions. And with that lens, we've looked at the commonality of unity in Christianity then Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, as well as a few others that got thrown in here and there, um, all of which originated in Asia. We find that the, the world religions who have lasted um, to the length of time they have the history for us to have this conversation, um, those um, all seem to have originated in Asia. And, and others, you know, we have, you know, Greek mythology and Zeus, and they are not practicing religions right now at this, at this point. Um, so they fall into a different category. I wasn't going to go there, so now I'm like, where am I at? Um, the idea that um, as we've wandered through this journey, we've been looking at the perennial philosophy. We've been looking at where is the area that there's this golden thread of universal truth showing up and specifically looking at the universal principles that we teach here in unity and how they show up throughout these various religions. Been quite a rewarding discussion, both here in Sunday and during the week. Uh, I've got quite a few phone calls from, from you guys, and I really love having those conversation. And, and we have talked about that we have left out so many um, from other traditions. In fact, the number Paul uses in this book is that there's more than 100 
thousand religions that that have unfolded in humanity's history that we could cover. And, and as an overview, there's a chapter in here where Paul talks about some of the common, common themes, the commonalities that show up throughout these religions. So I thought I'd cover a couple of those, um, beginning with the creation story. Um, it seems that most every religion seems to have some deep desire to explain the meaning of why we are here. Um, and, and to find apparent order in the midst of um, what seems to be chaos. And I love the one that Paul shares, and it's from the um, Omaha people in North America. So I wanted to share that with you this morning. At the beginning, all things were in the mind of Wakoda, Wakanda, excuse me. All creatures, including man, were spirits. They moved about in space between the earth and the stars. They were seeking a place where they could come into bodily existence. They, ascend, they ascended to the sun, but the sun was not fitted for their abode. They moved on to the moon and found that it also was not good for their home. They descended to the earth. They saw it was covered with water. They floated through the air to the north, the east, the south, and the west and found no dry land. They were sorely grieved, and suddenly from the midst of the water uprose a great rock. It burst into flames, and the waters floated into the air in clouds. Dry land appeared. The grasses and the trees grew. The host of spirits descended and became flesh and blood. They fed on the seeds of the grasses and the fruits of the trees, and the land vibrated with their expressions of joy and gratitude to Wakanda, the maker of all things. Isn't that just, I, I, it, I get chills. The idea that even the indigenous people of these lands understood creation in such an amazing way. And, and that that is a commonality we have throughout all of history. Um, shamans, it's another commonality. Shamans were these beings, usually human, who interacted with the spirit world. And traditionally, um, they did so through some type of altered consciousness, trance, drug-induced, various various ways of achieving that altered consciousness and usually always with the intention of facilitating some type of healing. And it always involved communion with something that is beyond our ability to perceive with the five senses. So we have shamanism um, in, in commonality with um, most all of the world religions. Another fascinating concept he found um, between the various religions, and let me quote Paul on this. The pantheons of the Greek, Roman, Hindu, Norse, and Celtic gods share figures and attributes, stories, and even names. The chief Greek god Zeus with his thunderbolt has similarities with the Norse, with the Norse thunder god Thor, who in turn is similar to the Hindu god Rudra, again a thunder, storm, and mountain god, who later morphed into Shiva. A lot of overlapping throughout religions, especially that, that grew up um, or evolved in the same general area from each other. And that happens even you know, throughout um, the world religions happened here um, with the Native American. It happens today. Look at how many um, practices in our own lives that we have borrowed or have taken ownership up in some fashion from other traditions. It's how we evolve spiritually. And, and you know, there's a lot of others that, I, that Paul talks about, the tree of life. Um, which speaks deeply to me of that, that desire to reach beyond the surface and find our common ground, find our connection, um, or what we have been calling the perennial philosophy, these universal truths. And, and when we found our path, 
the wisest advice we can ever receive is to stick to it. Stick to the path that you have chosen. Paul says it this way. We can end up like the man who dug 100 holes nine inches deep looking for water. Now, water we know represents spirit most of the time metaphysically. He became increasingly frustrated. The water, however, was 12 inches beneath the surface. One hole a little deeper would have brought the man what he desired. Sound familiar? You know, we can incorporate all these practices from other traditions in our life. However, if we truly want to experience spirit, we have to take that practice to a deeper place, to a deeper level. We must be willing always to take it deeper, um, to strive um, to experience the perennial philosophy, to champion that which we all have in common and experience oneness. We think religion is about God. Well, Paul says, they, meaning the religions, arise from humankind's universal desire to find meaning in a mysterious and often frightening universe. The religions show up because we're trying to make meaning and understand what's going on in the world around us. And, and they start from, from people who are experiencing spirituality. We tend to think it was in the opposite direction. Most every one of the religions we studied had several paths. One path was about experiencing the divine. The other path was about establishing the religion. But that experiential energy of the divine was where we found the perennial philosophy. It's where we found oneness. You know, Gandhi said, God has no religion. He very clearly said that. Does that ring true for you? God has no religion. It rings true for many today, which is why we have a lot of claiming, I am spiritual but not religious. That's, that is prevalent throughout our culture, not just here in the U.S., but around the planet. But remember, Gandhi also said religion is a matter of the heart. So what we're talking about is, is not when I believe that when we are saying we are spiritual but not religious, we are, are saying, I don't want to get caught up in the dogma. I don't want to get caught up in the politics. But I want the experience. I want the community. I want that energy of, of connection and of spiritual communion. In writing about his own path, Gandhi said, I came to the conclusion long ago that all religions were true and also that all had some error in them. And that whilst I hold by my own, I would hold others as dear as Hinduism. So we can only pray if we are Hindus, not that a Christian should become a Hindu. But our innermost prayer should be that a Hindu should become a better Hindu, a Muslim, a better Muslim, and a Christian, a better Christian. We pray for each other knowing that right where we are at on our spiritual journey is where we are supposed to be. And we celebrate that for each other. You know, instead, all too often, we condemn each other and take a stand that becomes politicized and polarized and plays out with great conflict, as we can definitely see in our media today. It um, seems to me that this movement towards spiritual but not religious is all about returning to the desire that birthed religion in the first place. And I think that's where the future of religion is. When Paul... Um, talks about in this book where the spiritual but not religious comes from. He says that um, he believes it's those who are tired of the battle and metaphorically are throwing their hands in the air 
and saying, I'm done with religion. I am spiritual, but not religious. I'm just done with it. I think we've forgotten the importance of community, if that's the energy that's feeding that statement. And I think it's vital that we surround ourselves with others who have chosen a spiritual path, who have made a commitment. It doesn't have to necessarily be the exact same spiritual path that I've chosen. I think that's the beauty of unity, is we each choose our own spiritual path. But, but to be around others who are like-minded and that they have made a commitment, you know, that's what our fifth principle is making a commitment to walking this journey and in community to struggling together to stay on our path. I think that's where it's got to be. I think that's where the future of religion is. And if it isn't, I would say we have forgotten the joy. I think the joy is what motivated us in the first place. And, I, and Paul agrees when he says, and this is talking directly about um, unity as a movement, Unity at its best is a joyous spiritual movement. We are daring to claim our good, sizzling, as Charles Fulmer said, with zeal and enthusiasm to do what is ours to do. Yes, life is problematic. Suffering is real from our human perspective. But we have the power within to overcome, to be triumphant. If you ask me about the future of religion, I would answer that whatever it is, it must be a religion of joy if it is to be relevant in the coming years. Amen. I, I, you know, multiply that statement over and over. It's all about joy. And in case you've missed it, um, which Sherry did a very good job of making sure you can't, we are in a process of a community re-engaging with this joy. We are in the process of truly remembering who we are or re-imaging who we are here to be. And over the next few weeks, we're going to look at our mission, our vision, our core values, our intentions, those things um, that we have set our hours to be. And then when Cindy Swall is here in September, we will reimagine what that looks like. Reimagine our spiritual home. What does it mean to belong to this community? What does it mean when we say unity of Salem? What are we talking about? What is the joy that brings us together? And how do we fan that joy? You know, my, mis my mission, when I wrote my um, credo in, in ministerial school, what I kept envisioning was a ministry that was kind of like um, a YOU for adults, where it was all about the experience and being in this experience together and you know, being in this energy in relationship with each other in, in ways that support each other on our journey. And I really believe that that is what is at the essence of what Unity of Salem is all about. And I, I am so excited for us as a community as we re-engage with remembering that that's what we are here for. You know, one of the things that have brought me great joy over the years um, is to be connected in a larger capacity which was really why I wanted to do this world religions thing, because we are part of something bigger. We're, we are not just unity. We are part of something um, that is changing this world. And on December 31st in 1986, thanks to the visionary work of um, Sir John Randolph Price, I first became involved with the um, world healing meditation. And I have been a part of that energy every year since, maybe not always in person with a group, but um, as much as I possibly could. And we came together that year, all ages, all walks of life, 
from around the world to participate in what has, at that time, was the most comprehensive um, prayer experience that had ever happened on this planet. Um, and well, I went to John Randolph Price's website to read some of what the intentions were with that. And um, I'm looking for the notes. There we are. To create a planetary affirmation of peace and love, forgiveness and understanding. And what happened was millions of people came together in a global mind link with the purpose of reducing the polarity of the negative energy that had been going on. And, and I believe that it has changed the planet, that a new era of peace on Earth was born in 1986, and that we've continued to plant those seeds ever since. It, they believe that over 500 million people participated in 1986. Well, that energy exists still today. That energy, you know, doesn't belong to 1986. It expands through time. And it was people of all religions, all faiths, throughout the seven continents in more than seven countries and in every state in the U.S. Over 500 spiritual and peace-related organizations registered with the foundation that they were participating and we saw the results in a report that was put out by the Stockholm International Peace Research. They said um, the Institute's director and a former West German undersecretary of defense said that there was remarkable progress toward a potentially more peaceful. No, thank, thank you. That there was remarkable progress toward a potentially more peaceful world. That was very sweet of you, Dale. There was a clean break in the pattern of constant increase in the number of major conflicts with which the world had grown accustomed. We made a difference. And we continue to make a difference. One of the things that we do um, as part of that ceremony, which here in Oregon is at 4 a.m., on December 31st, it's really early in the morning. So I thought maybe I'd bring part of that experience to you today. Um, we light candles for the world religions and have statements that are focused on creating peace. And so instead of our meditation today, our Reader's Theater is going to be leading us through an experience of, of the world religions and focusing on this energy of peace. So as they come forward, I'm gonna light the first candle. So I invite you to take a deep breath. If you're comfortable to even consider closing your eyes and allow this experience to move through you. Let me breathe deep into your heart. If you feel any tension as you exhale, let it go. and call on the power of your imagination as in our mind's eye right now, we visualize Mother Earth radiant with light from within. A star in the heavens of our universe. We perceive the light of the Holy Spirit guiding the unfolding expression of peace upon our planet. This light of the Holy Spirit radiates to all light bearers and visionaries now working for peace upon our planet, illuminating their minds and hearts with its love. Here in the silence, 
we behold this light of the whole Spirit of God. And we draw our light from its flame. Hinduism. We join our hearts with all those who honor the path of Hinduism. May there be peace in celestial regions. May there be peace on earth. May Vedic law propagate peace all through the world. And may all things be a source of peace to us. We meditate on the peace of God, shining now within us and within all who honor the path of Hinduism. Judaism. We join our hearts with all those who walk the path of Judaism. From the Torah we read, May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord deal kindly and graciously with you. May the Lord bestow his favor upon you and grant you peace. We join with our Jewish brothers and sisters, affirming peace now and always. Zoroastrianism. We join our hearts with those that honor the path of Zoroastrianism, affirming that understanding triumph over ignorance, that generosity triumph over indifference, that trust triumph over contempt, and that truth triumph over falsehood. We pray that the truth of peace triumph as we join our Zoroastrian brothers and sisters in seeing the light of peace and love illumine our world. Jainism, we join our brothers and sisters who follow the path of Jainism. Their sacred scriptures read, do not injure, abuse, oppress, enslave, insult, torment, torture, or kill any creature or living being. We join with those who follow Jainism in knowing the universal truth of peace for all. Shintoism. 
The Shinto prayer for peace expresses an earnest wish that the wind will soon puff away all the clouds which are hanging over the tops of the mountains. We join with our Shinto brothers and sisters in knowing that the light of truth dissolves all clouds of misunderstanding. Buddhism. We join with those who follow the teachings of Buddha in their request for peace. There is no happiness greater than peace. Filled with the loving kindness toward all, we join with our Buddhist brothers and sisters in affirming peace. Taoism. We join our hearts with those who follow the Tao. From the Tao we read, if you can empty your mind of all thoughts, your heart will embrace the tranquility of peace. We join our Taoist sisters and brothers on the path of the way of peace. Confucianism. We join our hearts with all those who look to Confucius for their understanding and wisdom. His words remind us of the power of peace as he shared. Seek to be in harmony and live in peace. In the stillness of true power, we join our brothers and sisters in Confucianism, affirming peace. Christianity. We join our hearts with those who walk the path of Christianity, honoring Jesus Christ as way shower. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We honor our brothers and sisters in Christ. Islam, we join our hearts with all who look to the Prophet Muhammad for their inspiration. We hear these words from the Quran. God will guide men to peace. He will lead them from the darkness of war to the light of peace. We join our Muslim brothers and sisters in affirming peace. Sikhism. We read in the sacred scriptures of Sikhism that truth is above everything, but higher still is truthful living. Know that we attain God when we love. We join our brothers and sisters who follow the path of Sikhism 
in knowing this is so. Baha'i, we hear the words of those who follow the path of Baha'i. Be a lamp unto those who walk in darkness and home to the stranger. Be a breath of life to the body of humankind, a dew to the soil of the human heart and fruit upon the tree of humility. Joyously, we meditate upon these sacred words. Native American. We pray with our Native American brothers and sisters. O oh, great spirit of our ancestors, I raise my pipe to you. To your messengers, the four winds, and to Mother Earth, who provides for your children. Give us the wisdom to teach our children to love, to respect, and to be kind to each other so that they may grow with peace of mind. Let us learn to share all good things that you provide for us on this earth. all visionaries and peacemakers. And the light of God now illumines the light of all visionaries and peacemakers upon our planet, acknowledging their work, regardless of the name they use to honor their creator. All faiths, all light bearers, all who seek to express love to one another, the Holy Spirit blesses them and we feel the expansion of light to illumine all the world, all the universe, as we affirm within the depths of our own hearts, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And so it is. And in this energy of prayer, we focus our attention on the prayer box that's right here in front of the lectern. And I invite you in this sacred space to speak out loud or in the silence of your heart the names of those that you would like to add to this box so that we can enfold them in love and light.
we truly know that there is nowhere that God is not. And that God is at work in each of the lives represented here in this prayer box. That God is at work in each of our lives. Guiding every thought, word, and action. Providing an abundance of whatever is needed to bring forth the highest good. And we give thanks for answered prayer. Knowing we pray this in the name and nature of the one living Christ presence. Amen. Thank you to our Readers Theater team. We'll leave the candles burning for a little while after service. Right now is the time that we set aside to support the work of this ministry through the financial abundance um, of our tithes and our offerings. The gifts that come in during the offering today, the gifts that come in through the donate button on the website, that come through the mail, that are dropped off at the office. We truly know that all of this is the bounty of God that the gifts of service bless this community beyond any understanding. And that unity of Salem would not be possible without your gifts. So let's, at this moment, put these symbols of abundance in the palm of our hand and affirm together our offertory blessing. Divine love flowing in, through, and as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Amen. <laughs> of transition from where we were at to that song <laughs> and yet such a perfect song for today all God's children got a place in the choir we all belong we are all part of one big human family so as Alice brings forth these tithes and offerings and places yeah you can find your way around thank you places them here on the altar we continue to infuse these gifts with joy knowing 
that this is the bounty of God. We send these gifts forward with wisdom, with joy, with love, with enthusiasm to do God's work and bring forth the highest good. Amen. Oh, we invite everyone to stand now and join in our closing song, Blessed Always. For the workshop on Wednesday. It's going to be fabulous. So let's close with our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And we are truly blessed when? Always. Always. Namaste. Namaste.